they did a nice job, you know. And I was concerned in the scrimmages. I was the first scrimmage, what we wanted to see. Their body language, how they reacted possibly to adversity, with their feet and their eyeballs in the right place, and those sorts of things. Because you guys have heard Frosty mention, you know, a young guy might be in there and he's in those snaps when, for whatever reason, things go haywire. Well, that's not his fault, right? But from the evaluation standpoint, as long as those things are in place, hey, let's, let, let's uh, continue to go down that road and see where it ends up. Given that Tristan redshirted last year yeah. and, and Adrian missed his senior year of high school, it's been yeah. a long time since both of them have played. Yeah. Did, is there a lot left to learn about where either of them are at once oh, September 1st? Well, starts? I think any time uh, there's going to be another evaluation because it's, it's game time, right? right? Uh, I think it's rare. But sometimes what happens is the way a guy practices isn't sometimes what happens when you're watching the game, you know. Yeah. Uh, as rare as that is, more times than not, how guys practice with regards to, as Brunsey asked about, the scrimmage and their body language, their feet and eyeballs are in the right place, it'll transfer over the game, you know. Yeah. Um, so you shouldn't have any issues. But, on the other hand, if a young guy gets in a game and <laughs> all hell breaks loose and, and you, you, you can't even recognize the young guy, then you have to kind of step back and figure out, well, what was the problem and so on and so forth. Yeah. Is the number one thing trust right now? Who do you, who do you guys trust more? Who's, 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 who's oh, bad well, players? yeah, you know, I, I think any time uh, your quarterback is playing for you, you have to be able to, to trust and, and have some sense of what he's going to do in particular situations, yes, sure. right? Well, when you're dealing with a young, a younger guy, uh, whether he's a redshirt freshman or a true freshman, every experience he's going to have, just like it is in practice and in a game, they're, they're going to be different. And you do the best you can to make certain that you understand how he's going to react to what might take place, unforeseen events, right? And. Um, yeah, as, as, as we've gone through spring and as we've gone through uh, fall camp, that trust factor is, is, is pretty pretty high right now. But then again, like uh, was asked earlier, just you know, there's another evaluation come game time. Hey Mario, a uh, big picture question. Given the offense that Jebbia came out of in high school and that he was in the system last year here, is it at all a surprise to you that he's been as good as he's been to be at this point where you're, you know, 10 days from the season opener and he's still in the running to be your starter? Well, you know, just getting to know Tristan, I would say no. You know, he's a competitor. He's really bright. He's enthusiastic about everything he does. He's got a great gun. He's athletic. So from that standpoint, um, getting to know him in that period of time that I did, I would say no. Having not known him before, well, you never know what you're going to get, right? Uh, but he's done He's done a really nice job. So from that standpoint, I would say no, it's not a real surprise. Because they're young, do you have days where, as a coach, you're just frustrated that they're not picking it up? No, well, I don't know that they haven't picked the phrase, picked it up. They've picked it up. I mean, they, they know our playbook pretty well. The issue, as it was, I don't know, what was that, Thursday, Friday, a week ago, two weeks ago, whatever it was, you know, things were happening maybe a little faster than their brains were processing the information because of install and so on and so forth. Um, now, the issue of picking it up, man, now you don't know what you're doing. You don't know what that receiver's route is. You don't know who your keep side key and read is. That's a whole different story. So that that has not been a problem at all. So I've been pretty pleased how they've been picking things up. Processing, like I said two weeks ago, they had a bit of an issue. Coach, we talked about it already, but Coach Walters was mentioning the situational scrimmage you guys are going to do tomorrow. Yeah, that was – how much – yeah. Sorry, so I guess uh, just to ask about that again. Uh, oh, no, that's fine. I, I – Frosty, I wasn't sure if that was going to happen or not, but apparently we're going to have the situation scrimmage, and that's always, always, always good learning. And one, uh, I think a quarterback can always improve on whether they're playing Pop Warner or the NFL or the situation to continue the offense aspect. That's always critical. The more you know about the situation, the better, the better you're going to be. 
just in terms of anticipating what the defense might do in terms of tendencies and so on and so forth. So that stuff is valuable for us. It's good to know that we're going to have it. And that'll be another evaluation process for us. Too. I guess outside of just threatening the offense well, there's anything in particular you look for in those situations, those high pressure, like two minute drill, red zone situations that separate quarterbacks in a competition like that? Well, you know, in those situations, uh, for, for whatever reason, one guy, I mean, both guys know the playbook forward and backwards, and for whatever reason, one of the guys just has a knack for, you know, I hate that phrase, you know, making a play, because what's making a play? Making a play is doing your freaking job, right? <laughs> so doing your job at the moment you got to do your job. You know what I'm saying? And, and some guys just, man, it's amazing how that happens sometimes, but it's, uh, it does. Coach, this staff uses these phrases, fast blinkers. Yes. We've heard that a lot. Yeah. Um, where, where does that, is that something that came from Frost, or where does that come from, and what does that mean exactly what he used? Um, I've always used a different phrase, but I love that phrase that Frosty, that I learned from Frosty was fast blinker. You know, and, and, and you're in a situation, you have the information available to you, and in the back of your noodle, boom, you pull it up, bang, let's go. So the ability to, to, to uh, access your short-term, long-term memory, boom, right at that moment. You know, it's, it's like riding a bike. And you, you've done it so many times. God, I just know what to do, and I can see it, and bang. And, and you do your job in that one instance. That's so critical. I can't imagine that there's a position where that's more important than what um, Well, I, I, offensive line, man. I mean, well, those guys got to make split second decisions and they don't know where that defensive line guy is going they've got to step with the man that's a maddening position as well as you can imagine but yeah you know the position i coach is a little goofy that way i would say yeah how, how do you like how do you assess that when you're recruiting like how do you find this coach held was saying you got to kind of recruit for it if in this offense you can't get a guy that's a slow blinker so how do you how do you assess it recruiting? well you know you, you do as good a job you can as talking to the coaches on the staff uh, and trying to figure out and asking those sorts of questions. Uh, do you ever get him on the board? Does he ever draw stuff up for you? Uh, when you're installing plays, does he have an issue with that? Uh, and in general, with their football IQ, it's like. But as you well know, you know, making the transition from high school to college is going to be a, a, require a certain step. Yes, right. And then when you go from college to the NFL, it's like going from you know, from the moon to the outer skirts of the universe just because of the complexities. Yeah. So there's always going to be that learning curve, but you try as best you can to try to piece together that young guy's profile uh, from an academic and a football standpoint. Because in the NFL, before they draft, and they can get them on the board, and they can give them Oh, yeah. Well, and you can. Well, yeah, you know, they have their interviews with the Wonderlick test and all that sort of stuff. And you don't have that. Ask them about his arsenal. dreams and all that sort of stuff. No, we don't. No. I guess so you could ask them about their dreams. I guess we could do that, too. <laughs> How do you, when they get here and like let's say you got somebody that's a little bit of a slow blinker, but you like the other parts of their 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 ability? How do you develop that? Well, uh, usually the roadblock, in my experience, has been because they may or may not know the playbook well enough, okay. um, and that creates the roadblock for them in terms of being able to transition what you may talk to them in the classroom about in terms of what they have to be able to do on the field. My experience has been that when you get guys to understand that piece of it, why there are slow blinkers, because you don't have as good a grasp as, of, of the offensive structure as you need. That typically takes care of it. But, you know, some guys are, are gifted that way, Sam. You know, and some guys, you know, their vision is from sideline to sideline. They're, they just, now, can you improve that? Certainly, obviously. But some guys just have that innate or their vision. They can see things that fast. They've demonstrated to me that their ability to handle the volume they've been able to handle and the volume that Coach Frost is going to want them to handle uh, from game to game, I feel really comfortable with that. Is he going to be mindful of that? Uh, absolutely in the sense of will it be as big if there are seniors? No, but I think he's going to feel comfortable doing the things that he wants to do to make sure we can attack the defense. That we're so if you played Akron tomorrow, you think you guys would be ready to roll right out there? I, I feel really comfortable with that. If you're talking about the quarterback position, mm -hmm. in terms of what they know, how they operate, do they know the reads and the keys? Could they draw uh, for you every pass pattern in our pass offense? Could they draw you all the fronts and the keys and reads for our guys? Absolutely. 
they can do all that stuff and can they take it to the field? Absolutely. And you might have been asked this, but when you guys start preparation later this week, will you tell the guy who's starting at that point or is that Oh I'm sure I'm sure Frosty at, at some particular point in time will will let us know what, what the decision is going to be. Um, whether it happens before or after that prep, I, I, I don't know. And that prep is Thursday or Friday? Thursday or Friday. Okay. Yeah. You, you coach yeah. a lot of quarterbacks. Have you ever been in a race this close between a competition between two quarterbacks? You've always been guy. Yeah, I have actually. And it was my first year at the University of Northern Iowa, and we had a, uh, a redshirt freshman by the name of Thomas Petrie and a young by the name a guy by the name of Griff Jurgens, who was a junior college uh, young guy, and they were there the year before I got there in, in, in 2001, and it was really, really close. Really good guys, athletic, could throw the ball, and as it happened, uh, Griff hurt his growing pretty severely in about the third week of fall camp, and so by default, Tom took the position. He ended up starting for us, and I think we were at seven. We were seven and one. We on a, we're on a great run. He ended up getting hurt, and Griff had to come back in. And he took us to the semifinals, uh, and we ended up losing to Montana. But the point being is Griff came in my office right after that happened, the first couple games, and said, Coach, is this how it's going to be? I said, Griff, if the shoe was on the other foot, what would you want me to tell you? Right? So Thomas is going to be the starter and something, unless something happens where he can't function, you know, and we're not doing very well, and or he gets injured. And I said, Griff, I don't have a reason why this happened. You know, I want to make God laugh, tell him your plan. Well, that's what happened. And I said, Griff, you're going to have to be prepared. The hardest position on the football team is probably backup quarterback, right? And it just, it just ended up that Thomas got hurt. Griff came in and, man, he... He was awesome. Matter of fact, that year, that year we played Eastern Illinois in the first round of the playoffs. Tony Romo was their quarterback, and we ended up beating them 49-46. It was hilarious. It was wild. Is that yeah. the toughest thing in the job, telling somebody you're second? Well, yeah, second. you know, and and um, I've gotten to know these young guys, and I, I love those cats in the room, you know, and um, they're all good guys. You know, and you, and you and, and you get to know them. So yeah, you, absolutely, man. It's it's hard. It's it's not easy. They're competitors. They want to play. You know, and um, it's easy when it's clear cut. <laughs> it's, it's hard, man, when it's it's tight. It's hard when it's tight. What's the last week before an opener like for you personally as a coach? When you you think these guys know this and that, but man, I've been nervous you, since January, man. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, man. I, and it's that forward thinking in my freaking brain where, and it's not because of their youth or anything. It's just, it's the nature of the position where you understand the importance to be effective and efficient, you know, and it, you just, you, I, I, you know, I've had that sense of nervousness, anxiousness since, since January because I knew it was coming. I knew Akron was coming. I knew our first game is going to be upon us and I know I'm how I'm going to feel you know so um, yeah I'll, I'll try to calm my, myself down a little bit Frosty's good at doing that with me too so I, I think I'll be okay